Hello everyone, welcome. We're back here for the Victory Road Circuit Spring Series. We're now in the top eight of the competition. This is our last top eight game. We've already seen who's going to be making it through uh, to the next round so far. This is the final decider. My name is Ben Kiraku. I'm joined here, uh, which way is it? It's that way uh, by the uh, wonderful David Partington that's joining us for the first time this weekend. David, how have you found the tournament so far to watch? It's been pretty fantastic, actually. I've really enjoyed watching everybody uh, over yesterday and today as well. Um, we've had some really interesting matches. And I think I think remember last time for um, the Wid series, we ha had a lot of sun, um, if you remember, because we had the legendaries. We had yep. lots of Zashins. It, it ended up being mirror matches towards the end. But here we've got a lot more uh, variety, even though we've had this series before um, going back previously. Um, but there still seems to be a lot of variety going around. There's no absolute one team that people seem to be sticking with uh, there's still a lot going around there's still a bit of sun there but obviously we've seen the rise of reggie lecky and and a couple of mulchers there which have been really interesting to see so a fine match previously there too yeah, certainly. Moltres facing off, and uh, as well as those Landorus as well, making popularity. And uh, as you said, David, this is the sort of quite a similar series to what we saw before, but a lot more innovation happening um, throughout this series with what we've learned from uh, previous series as we've come round. So uh, we're going to be going straight to see these player profiles right now. We have Marco Silva uh, versus Damiano, and Marco is on your team right now. Uh, he's running. Uh, possibly my favorite big rock colossal um, and he's going to be supporting that with a fairly standard cast of Pokemon uh, that Urshifu, Waterform, uh, Rapid Strike um, and Dragapult going to be setting it up there of course Marco no stranger to VGC whatsoever you can see his achievements going back all the way to the top 16 in the 2018 World Championships in the Senior Division Yogaping region, Regional Champion as well in the 2019 season Oceana International Champion in 2020. Uh, so playing a few different formats there. And of course, champion of one of the Latin American grassroots tournaments in the 2021 format as well. So uh, yeah, he played fantastically yesterday, made it this far. We'll see if he can go even further uh, to the final stages of this tournament. Absolutely, we can. And now we're moving on to the next player. We've got Damiano La Barbera. Um, we've got a Porygon Z, Clefairy, Regilecki, Incineroar, Urshifu, Rapid Strike again, and a, also that Rillaboom as well. So there's a few shared Pokemon here, but obviously the attention of these two teams is going to be directed at something completely different. We've got Colossal versus Porygon Z. And Damiano's got his own accomplishments of himself too. Lots of very recent ones in 2021. So he's number five in the Victory Road spring circuit qualifier top four in the winter and top 16 in one of an, another winter qualifier as well so very recent and he, so he's going to be very on point as to what is current what his calcs are for and what everyone is using here so i'm look, really looking forward to this match yeah, certainly. And Damiano has had a spectacular showing, really, uh, using that Porygon Z to great effect in the match he played in yesterday's event. I don't know if you managed to catch it, David, but the Porygon Z just stood strong against an Amoongus in Trick Room and launched out some big max strikes and uh, just didn't really just didn't really mind. Damiano uh, successfully pivoted that Rillaboom in against the Amoongus. So a really good understanding of board states, really good understanding of what his opponent had to uh, really do and that's why he's the likely the number one seed coming into this event so we'll see if he can carry that on we're going to go into team preview now uh, see these two teams face off against each other alongside their faces to see all of their reactions through this game and you can see uh, sometimes a little bit early as to whether or not they are happy with the plays that they're making but David what is it that stands out to you about how these two teams are going to interact well 
with against the colossal, you definitely want to be able to have an answer for the self aqua jet plus uh, weakness policy boost, or you want to have that answer for the surf weakness policy boost activation. So on Demiano's end, he's going to want to lead something with that, and obviously Urshifu plus Clefairy is a really solid lead versus that. So I imagine Marco's thinking about that a lot as to how he might get around that if he was just going to lead, say, Dragapult um, and the Colossal. But as we've seen, the Dragapult is Life Orb, so it is its own offensive option at the same time. So um, leading Dragapult and Colossal, not necessarily the Colossal is going to go for the offense there. It could go for the Max, go for a Phantom Force, um, even its own Max Geyser, and, and Airstream versus Nurture is going to do a lot of damage. But because of that Clefairy, things are a little bit more awkward thanks to that redirection and that friend guard support so i think we're going to see that used a lot in this game along with that urshifu um it's going to be a question as to who can get off their huge attacks more with their dynamax options with whether it's that porygon Z or that colossal but here come the leads they do indeed, and that Rillaboom is going to be starting off the show here alongside Regilecki, uh, and we do see uh, the Dragapult combined with the Urshifu. So both options for Surf and Aquajet on the field, so maybe uh, Marco thinking that he can switch in that uh, Colossal into position and just get a cheeky Water-type move off early doors without and, and understand which one he needs to switch. Indeed. So, yeah, interesting lead by Demiano here. He doesn't need the Urshifu or the Rillaboom. He's got Regilecki and and Rillaboom, uh, and Rillaboom instead. So he's uh, he's got his fast offensive option in that Regilecki. And as we've seen on Marco's end, he's, he's even though he's got the drag bot and the Urshifu, he's still in a very offensive position because we've seen historically that that Sash Mon compared with the Dragapult offensive Dynamax mode is very effective. But as we see, Marco is now going for the switch out, maybe doing for a little bit of a reposition here. Certainly, and Rillaboom coming in is going to be absolutely great to take any attack coming out from Rillaboom or the uh, Regilecki on Damiano's side of the field, as it is that Dragapult. Uh, you were predicting that earlier, David, Dragapult going on the offensive there. Being that Life Orb variant, he's going to be able to do a lot of damage. Uh, Marco absolutely leaning into that. So uh, Regilecki on Damiano's side of the field, going to be doing some repositioning on his own, going for that Volt Switch, and does... Pretty respectable damage there to the Dragapult. It uh, does end up switching out. So Damiano are uh, going to be bringing in something else. But it's going to have to be careful what that something else is. Because it could be taking a big attack there from the Dragapult. And that Dragapult is going to be launching out the max airstream into that Rillaboom and possibly actually prevented from being KO'd by that Clefairy that came in. Activating the friend guard ability. Um, but... Unfortunately for Damiano, it is going to be a speed boost for Dragapult and Rillaboom uh, as the Life Orb gets knocked off on Marco's side of the field by that quite powerful uh, knockoff from Damiano's Rillaboom. Yeah, I, I, a great place to play for his players here. So, uh, Rillaboom going for the knockoff into the Dragapult does so much damage. Getting rid of that Life Orb also reduces its offense even further i wonder if it really boom now can even with that friend guard support and the lack of life or could even survive something that isn't a max airstream so uh, which kind of forces marco to think about what he, movie he wants to go for this time whether he's going to try and guarantee that really boom attack or not but this clefairy is very supportive if we've seen um and now incineroar is coming in certainly is and intimidate only going to be effective on marco's uh, Rillaboom there dropping its attack and uh, even so the combination of attacks from Rillaboom and on uh, from Dragapult are going to probably be able to uh, knock out that Clefairy if of course it doesn't go for that protect which it just does. Take out from Rillaboom going into Incineroar on Damiano's side of the field and not really doing too much damage and Incineroar does absolutely take that Max Phantasm like a champ. Uh, so great switch in there from uh, Mark. Uh, sorry, from Damiano to get that Incineroar into the right position, and uh, certainly if it's got access to any Dark type moves, will be able to dispatch this Dragapult quite easily. But not a move, not a type that you see too commonly on Incineroar. Yeah, Damian's um, uh, Incineroar doesn't actually have a dark move here. It's got Taunt instead. Uh, and as this is an open team um, sheet tournament, both players know exactly what each other's sets are, but they also know the HP stat as well, so it's kept fair for whoever is uh, streaming here. So they, everyone knows how much kind of... Uh, some indication of the bulk on both of these players uh, as his Pokemon as well. But Clefairy's doing what it does best. It's going for that Follow Me. 
certainly is and it's gonna have to take a max airstream for its trouble so it uh, doesn't quite do enough to pick out the knockout there but Clefairy is likely to be going down here from the secondary attack from this Rillaboom unless it opts for something like a U-turn but no just a Woodhammer gonna be knocking out that Clefairy gonna be taking away Damiano's support and if that Colossal is in the back there for Marco it does open up a lot more opportunities for Marco to be able to set it up with either a Surf or a Aqua Jet from that Urshifu both options that we know are in the back for or on the field potentially for Marco to have uh, just a parting shot coming out from Incineroar into that Rillaboom and going to be returning to Damiano so a little bit of a double switch up going on here where Damiano has the opportunity to pivot in whatever he wants to in this slot and maybe bring the Incineroar in next to it maybe bring his other Pokemon in the back as well so lots of opportunity here for Damiano to get into exactly the position that he wants to he does so Reggie Lackey is the one to come in here and I think Damian has done an excellent job to stall Marco's Dynamax at this point whether Marco's done enough damage is another thing to work out here because he's he's not done a huge amount of damage on, on the board at all Damiano's Reggie Lecky is definitely very offensive as well it's got that magnet item so it's it's going to be doing a lot of damage especially now the dragapult is down because it loses access to those powerful max moves it's only got dragon darts and, and phantom force and it looks like it'd be in range especially of, of a max move from this reggie lecky too uh mm -hmm. boom has taken its fake out turn as well um on marco's end so it, the driver's seat is definitely for damiano at this point so it depends if he's going to go on the max this turn or not but but to be honest i, I feel like it's quite safe for him here because on uh, uh marker's end his dragapult does not have protect so it could just go down straight away this turn it certainly could but with that max airstream boost it is going to be fast enough to go before the regilecki on damiano's side of the field so no dynamax coming out here uh, regilecki just going for that electro web is it going to be enough no not quite enough to knock out the dragapult uh, on Marco's side of the field and yeah that might now be in range of a grassy glide coming out here from the Rillaboom on Damiano's side of the field but equally uh, Reggie Lecky's looking like it's getting close uh, even after the Intimidate drops for Marco's uh, Rillaboom to be able to knock it out with a grassy glide as well exactly so not too much to say on this turn i think um both players have still got quite a few pokemon left in this game and even though marco has used up his dynamax he still has all four of his pokemon so he has a lot of switching potential to get around damiano's max options if he starts tries to go for it this turn or not but no he's still saving it in the back he's going for that protect this time yeah, Reggie Lecky just not wanting to take that Grassy Glide, but uh, Marco correctly predicts that Grassy Glide uh, should be going, in fact, into the Rillaboom. Not enough to pick up the KO, though, so Rillaboom on Damiano's side of the field does manage to pick up the KO onto that Dragapult on Marco's side of the field, and it does now go down to 3 to 3, but uh, not all 3 3s are equal, uh, and it looks like Damiano's really falling behind in the damage category here. And he's going to do, have to do quite a lot of work to bring this match back um, and, and really start to pile on some pressure if he wants to win this game. Yeah, and I think we can all see here now that we've got on Marco's end here. He's got that Urshu and Togus in the back. So I don't think either of those want to be doing too much to um, a Regilecki, that's for sure. But uh, that Regilecki has taken a bit of damage, and Urshu does have that Aqua Jet up its sleeve. So the question is, is that enough to pick it up? I'm not too sure at this point, because um, if it's if it's Magnet, it's not Focus Sash on that Regilecki. He might be running a little bit of bulk, especially. And, and actually looking at that HP there, there is no way that's going to go down immediately this turn and there's no speed boost on it from that dragapult um grassy terrain is gone though so regilecki is in a good position to start getting out damage without taking a grassy glide first or taking a grass move with a lot of damage either um the thing is damiano i think i believe he still has clefairy in the back as well so um he might be able to switch that in and get that friend god boost right up on that regilecki as well so here comes a switch out 
Yeah, and that's Rillaboom that's for Damiano switching out uh, into that Incineroar in the back. And Intimidate's going to be quite key here for the Regilecki on Damiano's side of the field to make sure it can survive attacks. And of course, we do have the opportunity for it to go for its Dynamax here. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't quite manage to make it to the end of the sentence before we saw the animation, but uh, here it comes. So Regilecki is going to be the one that's going on the offensive now. And uh, the... The issue that Damiano faces is it is going to be a focus sash on the Urshifu on Marco's side of the field. So he's going to have to attack it twice. Uh, however, that particularly works out before it's going to be uh, doing all of the... Ooh. Oh, getting a knockout. But going into the Rillaboom instead and not picking up the KO is absolutely crucial here for Marco. He's just going to be able to keep on firing off attacks and it is that wood hammer going off onto Regilecki which is enough to pick up the KO on Rillaboom with that wood hammer recoil but surging strikes comes out here is going to critical hit so no no uh, impact from the Im intimidate coming in from that Incineroar and it looks like it might be enough to pick up the KO yes it is and yeah showing the absolute power of those critical hit guaranteed or oh, guaranteed critical hits coming out from Sturging Strikes there to just about pick up the knockout there. And it's going to be Marco bringing in his final Pokemon uh, while Damiano uh, is bringing in his. It's going to be that Rillaboom and Incineroar and going to be versus Togekiss, not Colossal, in the face of that Urshifu as well. Yeah, I think we just saw Damiano kind of just uh, put his hand up in like frustration there, just, sit, just finally revealing that Marco does actually not have that Colossal at all. Um, but Damiano now has that fake out turn that he's able to use this to enable him to use something on his Incineroar. I imagine maybe a, a flare into the Tokus, kind of whittle it down a bit more, because um, it's, it's looking bulky here, but... Uh, all that Urshifu has to do is, is protect uh, potentially the Tokus as well, and then the Tokus can then follow up and go for more follow meter to redirect the Grassy Glides away from the Rillaboom so the Urshifu can get more attacks off. So it's, yeah. uh, I think it's still close at this point. Um, both are still down to only two Pokemon. And yeah, that was a really close KO for that Regilecki at the end there. And uh, Regilecki actually do, does actually have quite a bit of bulk in investment in that HP stat, as both these players can see. So we know that probably would have been quite close. So, uh, there's the protect from the edge food. Yeah, following up with protect from the Togi Kiss, no surprises there. Just wasting those fake outs coming out from the Incineroar and just making sure that there's no way that there's any shenanigans going off. Of course, Togi Kiss wants to get that follow me going at the HP that Rillaboom and Incineroar are going to be getting back from the grassy terrain is pretty irrelevant in this situation. You know, it's really down to Marco now to just follow me, protect that Urshifu. Urshifu can definitely finish off both of these Pokemon, no problemo. Uh, and it's likely that Damiano is going to have to go back to the drawing board here and come back maybe a little bit stronger. Yeah, I think so. Really, yeah, as you said, follow me just out from Tokus is probably the safest option here. Urshifu could still, even if it takes a full glassy guide, it could still get another attack off. And um, it's looking like a, well, it's definitely a game two, but something that Demiani needs to maybe <laughs> think about again. Because he did get that Regilecki into position to get the, the Dynamax going with the grassy terrain gone as well, but it still took so much damage from all those attacks. And a lot, one of his attacks was into a Rillaboom, which resisted the hit. He didn't get a KO. You kind of really want to be getting knockouts every turn here. So as we see, the Glassy Glide does come out into Togekiss. Um, thanks to that for me. Yeah, I guess the critical hit, uh, not going to be too important there, but does maybe uh, give Damiano a little bit of a nicer position, uh, technically speaking. But Rillaboom goes down to the close combat. Uh, so... Uh, Marco not wanting to risk the surging strikes, not picking up the KO. Togekiss doesn't go down here from the Flare Blitz, so Togekiss very free now to just keep on following me. Um, and Marco, he's going to be dropping his defenses, but that doesn't matter when you're holding a Focus Sash, so... Yeah, looks like it's going to be Marco winning the first game. We're going to be going into game two, and yeah, I think that's just an example of how much uh, a Colossal team that is... Uh, not actually completely reliant on a Colossal using that really offensive Dragapult can operate and operate really effectively. Yeah, that's part of the strength of it, isn't it? You like you have to respect that Colossal when you're um, when you're going up against it. But if 
it, it, the Colossal player can easily just lead something else and kind of take control of the situation against what they ascertain as a lead that their opponent can lead versus Colossal. So, mm. um, and I think that's maybe what happened here. As you saw Damiano's kind of frustration there, he, like the Colossal didn't even come to the match at all. So yeah. he, um, yeah. he kind of got really kind of psyched out thinking maybe surely it was coming in. But finally, when that Togekiss turned up, instead of the Colossal, his his game the game completely changed for him because he had the Rillaboom there ready to hit the, the Urshifu um, yep. and and outspeed the, the Colossal as well fake out on both of those mons to potentially stop the Aqua Jet too so yep. um, but as soon as he saw the tokens with the follow me um, it was it was looking pretty over thanks to that Urshifu's uh, phenomenal attacks versus everything else but we are now going to go into game two and I imagine we may see either opponent actually bring the one that I imagine their team is kind of centered around like the, that big <laughs> Porygon Z that we've seen, um, and that that colossal. But we, yeah, we didn't actually see either this time. But to be honest, if I'm Marco, I, I don't blame him for not going for that because Urshifu with the Clefairy support is seems very strong versus him. Um, mm. And he, and to be honest, Demio looked like he still had some other options up his sleeve by leading that Regilecki as well. And as I think we saw in a previous top eight earlier today, uh, Regilecki doing a lot of work um, versus a uh, colossal team as well to the point that it could all the, the colossal team was. Max Garland then switch out again. So um, yeah. let's uh, we'll see how what happens when we're going to this game. But I imagine there'll definitely be a switch up of some Pokemon. I think there will be, and uh, here we go. The first switch up of the game, Clefairy and Porygon Z coming out early doors. So uh, you're absolutely right, David, that Porygon is coming out, and it is going to be that Dragapult Urshifu meeting them on the field. And uh, I feel like this time Damiano is going to be doing some damage. Yeah, I think so. And that Porygon Z does have access to Dark Pulse, and specifically on this team as well. So it has an option. I imagine that could probably, with a helping hand boost, completely knock out a Dynamax Dragapult potentially as well with that massive 135 base special attack. So, uh, and the Clefairy's looking pretty nice here as well. It might go down though to a, a Dynamax Phantasm plus uh, Surging Strikes though. Um, but that, this Clefairy is full support. We've got Follow Me, Helping Hand Protect, and and ally switch so who knows what's going to happen here. and marco knows this too so um every turn with then that clefairy's on the field it's going to be scary and he probably has no idea where his attacks are going to go he's just going to kind of make no. a safe and calculated play a safe and calculated would be the way to play this as marco's calculated that he needs to dynamax his dragapult early doors and get some pressure going onto the field of course we see that porygon z going for its own dynamax and uh, yeah it's it's likely going to be either a follow me or an ally switch or a protect coming out from that clefairy <laughs> to meet it so uh, I, I don't know how many coins you've got david but i'm running out and we're going to see the ally switch coming out here from uh, the clefairy on damiano's side of the field uh, no effect on oh. the position but oh it's gonna be the max phantasm going into that porygon z it uh, looks like a close combat follow-up as well so a uh, great uh, Great bit of targeting there, just spreading out all of the damage available to Marco. And that uh, Mag's Darkness doesn't even pick up the knockout on that Dragapult. So that's really crucial there for Damiano. Uh, but more crucial is that that Clefairy is still at full health. It is exactly. Um, however, I like Marco's position actually because he's um, he's still got that offensive move that he still use on his Dragapult. And if um, unless unless Damiano maybe um, protects one one slot, say the Porygon Z as it gets targeted in and Clefairy goes for something, um, then he maybe he doesn't take a KO. But at this point, I think Marco is able to take one because he can um, he can go for a Phantasm to say the Clefairy slot and that close combat again, and he's guaranteed pretty much guaranteed to get some damage off because. Because um, if Porygon's head protects, Clefairy can't do anything. Doesn't have Sing, doesn't have Icy Wind or anything like that. So um, it's all on this Clefairy to choose what it's going to do. But it, and it is the protect this time. Mm, so uh, Damiano's trying to uh, get the... <laughs> oh my god. The uh, Max Phantasm does go into the Porygon's ear again. But clever targeting there from Marco. Just going absolutely into the Porygon Z slot and punishing that protect on the Clefairy. So Porygon Z does go down. Uh, doesn't get its final opportunity to um, go for a Dynamax move. But Rillaboom's coming in and uh, it's looking like it's in a nice position to dispatch that Dragapult. Yeah, it is. Um, and 
a, a good play by Marco again. He's just going playing it down the line. He's making sure that he's not going to absolutely lose to an ally switch or absolutely lose to uh, a, a follow or a, a big protect from uh, the Clefairy there. So he makes this nice safe play. He he was willing to trade there, but because the Clefairy goes for the protect, Demian doesn't get too much out of it this time. But as you said, Rillaboom does have the opportunity to go for a glide somewhere here. It certainly does. And Incineroar coming in to switch in for that Clefairy, just protecting it, uh, dropping Urshifu's attack, which uh, may or may not be effective. And there's the Grassy Glide going into the Dragapult. It is going to be enough to knock it out. Uh, there was a critical hit there, but not sure that really was too uh, too impactful there. And Dragapult is going back to Marco. So uh, we'll see if Surging Strikes comes out and ignores that Intimidate. There it is, uh, coming out on to the Incineroar and the Switch. In. So, a uh, great play there from Marco. I have, to, I have to pause every time I see the critical hits as well. I'm like, oh, it's a critical hit, and then, uh, and then we just remember that surging strikes always yeah. critical hits. So I always, always get caught out by that. But uh, Urshifu getting that big damage on Incineroar, taking it really, really low, and uh, may get a little bit of recovery from the grassy terrain. But it's, it's going to be difficult for Damiano to really leverage that Incineroar now that it's taken so much damage. I think so too. Um, he, he does get it pivoted in, so he does have that fake out turn here. So he is able to fake out the Urshifu, and Rillaboom can then go for something. But Urshifu can just protect here on Marco's end, and Tokis is fairly safe to go for whatever it wants at this point. Um, Rillaboom's not in a solid position. I think if I'm in Damian, I want to be switching something out and getting something in. And then, yeah, here comes the Clefairy. Yeah, and the, the trouble is now is is what's going to be doing the damage to the Togekiss on Marco's side of the field because. Uh, there's, there's not too many options. We see a double protect coming out from Marco, just protecting the Urshifu from that glassy, grassy glide coming out from the Rillaboom. But uh, yeah, it's now it's now going to be really difficult for Damiano with Incineroar damaged in the way that it is uh, and Clefairy not having any attacks. Rillaboom not having any attacks that are good against Togekiss. Uh, now it's going to be a real uphill battle for Damiano to, to really do some damage here. Uh, and Marco knows that. He's bringing the Urshifu out, bringing the Rillaboom in, and going to be using that to take as much damage as he can from Damiano's side of the field. He is. So Damiano recognizes that he's not necessarily going to get a lot of uh, versus the um, whatever he hits. Maybe expecting a follow me there, trying to get a lot of damage on the, the Tokis, but Tokis instead goes for that air slash because switching out your thing that's weak to the grass move is obviously a good idea. So he gets in the Rillaboom and it enables a Tokis to get off that uh, crucial attack. But as we can see on Damiano's Rillaboom, it's quite boggy with that friend guard and assault vest it's got there. But this Togekiss on Marco's end is super luck cr scope lens. So so that he's got a 50 cent chance to crit all of these moves so another one might actually knock it out certainly and uh, Rillaboom going for a fake out Clefairy trying to help out its partner but to no avail uh, just going to be a fake out making the Rillaboom on Damiano's side flinch and has to take an air slash for its troubles and unfortunately now it looks like it's probably going to be in range of a dazzling gleam uh, Probably a Dazzling Green critical hit, so uh, Clefairy not going to be able to protect that Rillaboom with Follow Me anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, a, a excellent point to be in the range there. Uh, Air Slash was so good. You had a 50% chance to crit, or, and you had the 30% chance to get the flinch as well, so there wasn't a lot of chance for Damian to get, to get out of that turn with something, and even if it did, it's versus something that put too long in the both resist grass, so he gets it out, gets Incineroar in, but is it safe coming in here? Not particularly. Uh, Clefairy, however, is going to be safe this turn and goes for a protect where Woodhammer comes in and meets the Incineroar square on the noggin uh, right there, doing uh, a respectable amount of damage, but definitely bringing that Incineroar into range from this Dazzling Gleam coming out from the Togekiss. So uh, it's going to be Clefairy and Rillaboom versus the world. We see the critical hit there, not really going to be too, uh, too relevant there to the damage output. And Rillaboom on Marco's side of the field, as well as Togekiss look like they're they're sitting pretty pretty uh, so to speak and mm. looks like they're going to be able to close out this game with f uh, a fair amount of ease here 
I think so, yeah. Rillaboom is not what you want at this point. Even with its coverage moves that it that it has here, I think we've got Grassy Glide, U-Turn, and Knock Off. All things you still don't want versus a Toe Kiss especially. So, And the Fairy can't sing. It can't do much at this point. It's all eggs in the support basket and hopefully to get Porygon set to do things. But unfortunately, Marco I think, was able to pilot his team excellently, even without that Colossal. And piling on the offense with that Dragapult was excellent as well, um, especially surviving that max darkness there i think damiana had maybe gone for the helping hand max darkness to kind of um just go right on the offensive there maybe a bit obviously thought but it still would have put him in an excellent position but there's the fake out and then the follow me and here's an attack coming from this tokus yeah, and it's going to be that dazzling gleam there. Uh, it looks like it's enough to pick up the knockout with the critical hit on Rillaboom. Uh, probably needed that critical hit with Friend Guard and Assault Vest. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be now uh, Clefairy versus the world. And uh, Clefairy, Clefairy, Clefairy left all of its attacks at home in uh, this tournament, so not going to be able to do anything. And uh, likely going to be seeing Damiano forfeit. Uh, rather than let that Clefairy get knocked out, I think that's probably that's probably the nicer thing to do in Dabiaro's position than to uh, allow that Clefairy to just get attacked and knocked out uh, when it isn't able to reply back. So uh, congratulations there to Marco. He played fantastically and really positioned himself really well, leveraged that Dragapult to great effect and used all of its tools in the basket, even though in that second game didn't actually manage to land any attacks with it. it was was still putting on enough pressure alongside that Urshifu to really uh, put Marco in a great position. He did, yeah. I I really like the way both players played it, though, because as the Colossal player on Marco's end, he had an excellent strategy, even without the Colossal mode itself. Like, mm. he, he obviously had a strategy to kind of... Um, lead the Dragapult, which is often that support Pokemon that you have for the Colossal team, but go straight on the offense and be able to dent down on immediately without any setup, which I think was very key, and especially that something that's very fast versus uh, pretty much whole of Damiana's team other than that Regilecki, which doesn't isn't very um, going to be doing much damage to Dragapult anyway, so hmm. um, I, the Clefairy, though, I can see where Damiana's going for it, though, because especially in a best of three open team sheet format, um, even though you you know exactly what your opponent has you still have no idea how your attacks are going to land or, or yeah. what your opponent is going to do so it, it adds those extra layers as well but i think it goes to show for marco's team how solid it is and and the way he was able to use this urshifu and the dragon combination he kind of he stuck, stuck with the game one and game two so he knew i think potentially how valuable it was versus that lead and that he could fire his attacks one way and another to a way that he wasn't losing out completely which i think was really certainly good. and yeah that and you know defense drops coming out um if if those max phantasms were going to land and uh, that would have taken out clefairy clefairy was the only thing that caused any doubt with how uh, Marco was going to target and that's exactly probably why Damiano went for the set that he did and having ally switch in an open team sheet format is is just is just putting doubt in your opponent's mind um, in, a, in a similar somewhat similar way to you know does it does a Pokemon protect and does it not and does it switch and does it not well now is it going to be in the slot that I target or is it not and that's, yeah. that's always going to be a, a difficult thing to uh, to manage when you're targeting all of your moves so uh, great games to both players. Uh, sad to see Damiano be knocked out, but Marco is going to be going on to the next round. We're going to go to a short break. Uh, we'll, we'll be back very soon, and we'll start to get to the latest, uh, latest stages of this tournament and see who we think is going to be going all the way and making it to be champion in this Victory Road Circuit Spring Series.